Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector shield graphic using Inkscape. So let's go ahead and get started here on Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our document. We'll go to File, Document Properties, and uh, we want to set the display units to pixels and uncheck the box that says Show Page Border. And we can close out of that. And now we want to go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, then we'll zoom in at one-to-one -one and open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. And we're going to want Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button up there. And uh, up here, we want to turn on this button that says Snap to Cusp Nodes. We want to have that turned on for this tutorial. So. Once we've done that, we can get started. We're going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can press B on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click on the canvas down here to create a point, and then hold Control and bring this line straight up, maybe about that far, and then click again. And while still holding Control, I'm going to bring this straight out to the left, maybe about that far, and then click. And then we can let go of Control and just connect the line back to the starting point over here. So we end up with a shape like that. And then I'm going to grab the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to take this line, and I'm just going to pull this out like that. And I'm going to click on that node, and it's going to give us these handles here. I'm going to take this handle, and then hold Control so it locks onto the vertical axis, and bring it down about that far like that. And I'll take this handle, bring this out a little bit. I'll hold Control, and bring it out to uh, maybe 165 degrees. It'll show you down here what degrees it is. So this is about 165 degrees, like that. And that's gonna be half of the shield right there. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna turn that red now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And I'll take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. I'll go back to the select tool. Oops. I'll go back to the select tool and I'll duplicate this. So I'm gonna right click it and go to duplicate. And I'll flip it horizontally with this button over here. And then I'll just click and drag it and snap the corners together like that. And then click and drag over both of those and unify them both together by going to Path, Union. And if you look at the thumbnail, you'll notice the top of the shield is kind of rounded. So that's what we're gonna do here. This, we're gonna change this from flat to kind of rounded. So to do that, I'm gonna create a circle. So I'll come over here to the Circles and Ellipses tool and hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm just gonna make that green and I'll grab the select tool and I'll put this right about here. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the red shield and with them both selected, we just wanna center it on the vertical axis and then click off it to deselect everything. So now I'm just gonna take this circle and take this bottom arrow and just bring that up a bit. Because notice where the, uh, the green circle intersects with the, uh, the red shield, that's gonna be the curve right there. So I'm just gonna pull this out a little further. I'm gonna hold control and take this bottom arrow and just make that a little bigger so that the curve isn't so pronounced like that. Maybe I'll bring that up a little more. And I'd say that's a pretty good curve right there. So once we have it set, I'll hold shift and click on the red shield and go to path, intersection. And what we wanna do now is create a whole bunch of shapes that are gonna make up for like the edge of this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this by hitting control D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna make that green and I'm gonna give it a green outline by holding shift and clicking on the color green. And then I'll lower this one step so it goes beneath the red shape. And I'm gonna come over here to the stroke style tab. I wanna change the, uh, the units of measurement to pixels. And I'm gonna change this to about 10, see how that looks. Uh, you notice the thickness there. I want it to be a little thicker than that, so I'm gonna change it to uh, maybe 20, see so how that looks. Maybe 25. All right, that's pretty good right there. Uh, it, it may be different for you depending on which screen resolution you're using. Uh, just try to uh, eyeball it and get it to about that thickness compared to the red. If it works, if it works out the same so that you're using 25 for you as well, that's that's great. So once we have that set, I'll finalize that by going to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. And now I want to take this red shape and duplicate it again. I'll just hit Control D. And I'll give this one a red outline by holding shift and clicking on the color red. And I want to make this one slightly bigger 
than the one we just created. So that one was that we just created was a 25 point stroke. So I'm going to change this to maybe uh, try 50 to see how that looks. And I'll send that to the bottom with this button here. This is lower selection to the bottom. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll make that a little bigger. Uh, maybe 75. See how that looks. No, not that big. Uh, let me try 60. Nah, still. I think. Yeah, I guess I'll go with 25. I mean 50. That's pretty good. And I'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, and path, union. And we're going to do this again. We're going to take this red shape here, hit Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to turn this one green, then hold Shift and click on the color green to give it a green outline. And I'll make this one even bigger than the previous one was, which was 50. So this one will be maybe uh, 75. And I'll send that to the bottom as well. And this one we want to be a lot thicker because this is going to be, this is going to make for like the edge here. So I'm going to make that, I'm going to try 100 for this one, see how that looks. That's what we're looking for here. We want it to be like double the size of the other one. So I'll leave that as that is. And I'll go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. And now we just have to create one more shape. Uh, hold on, let me go to path break apart. There we go. Now path union. So now we have to create one more shape. Uh, we'll, we'll grab the red shape in the center here. Hit control D to duplicate it. And hold shift. Click on the color red to give it a red outline. And I'll make this one uh, 125. And I'll send that to the bottom as well. And I'd say that's pretty good right there. One more time. We'll go to path. Stroke to path. Path. Break apart. Path. Union, And if you don't know what's going on when I do that sequence there, I made a video explaining it. So if you could just search my channel for it, it's called Stroke, uh, a Path to Stroke Break Apart, something like that. It shouldn't be too hard to find. So uh, if you're curious about what is going on with that sequence, because I get that question a lot. So uh, anyway, uh, what we could do now is um, we have all of the shapes we need. So I'm going to take this red shape right here. I'm actually going to grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to click and drag to create an ellipse going over it. I want to get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And I want to turn this blue. What we're creating now is this white glow, this white shine effect. And it's going to take the shape of this red object right here. And we're going to do a difference with this blue circle. So I'm going to grab the select tool and put this like over here like that. If you notice the curve going through the red shape, that's what we're looking for right there. Something like that. Maybe I'll pull that down a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you could hold shift and click on the red shape and go to path difference. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this green shape. I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up and I'm going to make this 90% gray with this button here. This is 90% gray. If you hover the cursor over the shade, it's the second shade in from black, 90% gray. And I'll come over to the fill tab and I'll click the button that says linear gradient. I'll give that a linear gradient and I'll grab the gradient tool, which is over here or you can press G on the keyboard and I'll click on this stop right here, the little circle stop, bring the opacity up and I'm going to make this side 80. So I'm going to hover the cursor over the shade of gray, which is the third one in that says 80% gray. And I'm going to take the, uh, the left side and put this at the bottom and take this side and put this towards the top. And then I'll hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. That's pretty good. And what I want to do now is go to the select tool. I want to duplicate that shape, so I'll just hit Control D on the keyboard. And now with this duplicated copy, I want to flip the gradient around. So I'll go over back to the uh, the gradient tool, or again, just press G on the keyboard. And I'll take this one, put this up top. And I'll take this one and put this at the bottom. I'll snap it onto that node down there. And I'll take this one and then just hold Control so it locks it vertically like that. And that's pretty good right there. And now I just want to take half of this because if you notice here, it's kind of split up the the, uh, the dark gray part of the shield. is kind of split up into two. So I'll go to the uh, Bezier pen, which is over here, or you can just press B on the keyboard. And I'll snap the cursor onto this bottom node. Click, hold control, bring the line straight up and click. Now we can let go of control and bring the line going around the outside of the object like that and back to the starting point and go to the select tool. Hold shift, click on the uh, the gray shield, and go to path, intersection. And then I want to lower that one step so it goes beneath this red shape. Speaking of which, we're now going to take this red shape, bring the opacity all the way up, make it white, 
and then I'll give this a linear gradient with this button here, linear gradient. I'll go back to the gradient tool. I'm gonna take the white stop and put this up about here. And I'll take the transparent stop and I'll just bring this down about that much like that. It looks pretty good where you kind of can't see it anymore going towards the right side. It kind of just fades out. Maybe something, uh, that was good how I had it. I'll just leave it right there like that. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool. And what we're going to create now is this little beveled edge going around the uh, inside of the, uh, the frame here. So to do that, I'll click on the, uh, the red object there, that's, that small little red object. I'm going to bring the uh, opacity of that all the way up. And I want to find a shade of like uh, orange brown over here. Maybe this one here, the 803300. I'll go with that. And I'll give that a linear gradient. And I'll uh, go back to the gradient tool. Click on this stop. Bring the opacity all the way up. And then make that uh, yellow this shade of yellow here, the FFCC00. And then I wanna make that lighter, so I'll just take this L row. Under the HSL tab, I'll take this L row and slide that to the right. And I'll put this towards the bottom down here. And I'll take this brown one and put this towards the top. I'll just hold Control and bring that up like that. And I'll go back to the Select tool. I wanna to click on the red shape that's in the furthest back, the largest shape on the page. I wanna bring the opacity of that all the way up. And I want to give that a linear gradient as well. And I just want to, from that list, choose that same gradient we just created. And now go back to the gradient tool. And for this one, I'm just going to flip it around. I'm just going to take the dark, the brown side, and put this towards the bottom. And I'll take the lighter side and put it at the top. Just hold Control to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. Straight up there is pretty good. And we'll go back to the select tool. And now I want to take this green shape, click on that, and then just hold Control and click and drag this over to the right so we can work on that. And uh, to move the page around like this, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. So um, let me take the opacity of this and bring this up. Uh, I want to make this yellow. I'll choose this shade over here that we used previously, FFCC00. And I'll give this a linear gradient. And I'll go to the gradient tool. Click on this stop right here. Bring the opacity all the way up. Then I'll double click this line right about here to put a new stop in there. And I'll double click it again right about here to put another stop in there. And with this one selected, I'm gonna make that a shade of uh, brownish orange like we used previously. I'm gonna try to find that shade. I think it was 80, there it is, 803300. And I'll click on this one, give that the same shade. 803300. Then I'll take this stop to the left and put this up top. And I'll take this one and bring this down here and just hold control to lock it onto the, uh, the vertical axis like that. That's pretty good. I'll go back to the select tool, hold shift, click on the, uh, the large shield shape, and let's center that up on the vertical axis like that. And now we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what I'm gonna do now is, we gotta put like a little bit of a, uh, a sheen, like a shine effect going on this, on the on the frame of the shield as well. But first, I'm just going to tone down this yellow a bit. I'm just going to grab the uh, gradient tool and click on the uh, the shield right here. And then I'll take this stop, just click on that. And under the HSL tab again, I'll take the L row and slide that to the right a little bit. That's pretty good. And up here, I'll do the same thing. Slide that to the right a little bit. And now what I want to do is go back to the select tool. And with that object selected, I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'll just make that green for now and bring the opacity down about in half like that. And now I want to create a circle going over the overlapping through here because we're going to be creating this shape right here. So I'll grab the uh, circles and ellipses tool and I'll just click and drag to create an ellipse going through it like that. And I'll grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the green shield and just center it up on the uh, vertical axis. Click off of it to deselect everything, and I'm just going to hold control and just click and drag this up a little bit. Now, maybe I'll leave it right about there. That's pretty good. And I'll hold shift, click on the green shield, and with them both selected, go to path, intersection. And then I'll lower that to the bottom, and then raise it one, raise selection one step. Click on it again, and now it should show up there like that. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this all the way up. I'm going to make this white. And I'll give this a linear gradient. 
and I'll go back to the gradient tool over here and I'll take this stop to the left and put this down here like that and I'll take the transparent stop and put that towards the top oops I messed that up we want the white stop down at the bottom and the transparent stop towards the top going up a little further though like that I'll go back to the select tool and uh, I think the only step now would be to alter this shade of uh, this is the brownish orange here because it's a little too light we go back to the gradient tool and we click on the uh, shape and you can just click on each individual stop and just change the color or the, the you know the, the deepness as you see fit I'm just gonna edit that a bit and uh, I'm gonna zoom in on this I'm just gonna hold control and roll up the mouse wheel click on that stop click on that shape there take that stop darken that up a bit like that uh, I'll do the same thing down here click on that stop darken that up a bit Let me zoom out and there we have it we've created our shield graphic using Inkscape so uh, if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching Thank you.